Good morning. Um, I have a word. Um, my daughter is asleep. I'm going to try to do as much as I can. If I have to pause it and jump back in, that's what I'll do. Um, let me pray. Father God, we come before you saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, always uh, sending help. Always um, standing true to your word. Always reiterating your word. Always holding your word to such an extent that we can bank on it. We just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to be able to bank on your word because it is a comforting place to be. When when man makes a promise, when family makes a promise, friends make a promise, there's a chance that that promise may not be fulfilled. But with you, oh Lord, sovereign king, your promises, your words we can bank on. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Thank you. So I opened to Ezra this morning. 6.24 a.m. 5.2.23. And it appears God gave me Ezra. God gave me Ezra 10.9 a, a, a couple years ago as well, but... Go to go to my my recent words or videos if you ain't see that one. But he gave me Ezra three seven about rebuilding the temple in on July twenty sixth of last year. But today he just gives me good old Ezra one, and this is gonna be a little lengthy because I'm gonna be jumping through the scriptures, but it's all in Ezra. So, I opened up to the devotional part, and it says, verse to remember, though we, though we are slaves, our God has not forsaken us in our bondage. He shows us kindness in the sight of the kings of Persia. He has granted us new life to rebuild the house of our God and repair its ruins. And he has given us a wall of protection in Judah and Jerusalem. I believe that's Ezra 9.9. 9. So, I'm like, okay, God, let me just... Let me just start where I am. And the first sub chapter, let me put my phone on, do not disturb. Sorry, should have been did that. The first, the subtitle to the first chapter is Cyrus helps the exiles to return. Okay. So it says, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, the king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also to put it in writing. I just want to put a pin there. The Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, the king. So in scripture, there all says, God turns the heart of the king. And there's going to be so much, um, so much reflecting that in this text as well but that's not the heart of what I, what i'm saying today what god is saying today okay um yeah he moved the heart of the king of persia to proclaim a proclamation throughout his realm and also put it in writing this is what cyrus king of persia says the lord the god of heaven has given me all the kingdoms and of the earth and has appointed and has appointed me to build a temple for him at jerusalem in judah appointing me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in, in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord. There goes that building of the temple again. The God of Israel, the God who was in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. And in any locality where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with free will offerings. God kept highlighting free will to me as well. For the temple of God in Jerusalem. So now he's issued out a decree where there's going to be a temple rebuilt. The people got to help. Then the families of the, of, then the, then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites, everyone whose heart God had moved, again, whose heart God had moved, whose heart God had moved, prepared to go up and build the house of, of the Lord in Jerusalem. So that's God. Moving hearts, changing hearts, turning hearts, and that's the rebuilding again. All of the neighbors 
resist all of, all of their neighbors assisted them with articles, silver and gold, goods, livestock, with valuables, gifts, in addition to all the free will offering. So you got people free will giving. And although a decree has been made, people are giving their free will offerings. Okay, so there's that free will that we have, but they're show that shows people's hearts, right? Moreover, King Cyrus brought out the articles belonging to the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of his God. Cyrus, king of Persia, had bought them by Midrath, the treasurer, who counted them out to Shesh Bazar, the prince of Judah. And this was the inventory. So they list all the articles and stuff that was brought um, back. Shesh, Shesh Bazar brought all of these along with the exiles when they came up from Babylon to Jerusalem. So... There was a point, point in time where Nebuchadnezzar was in charge and he brought everything to his God. And it appears here that um, who, who God has appointed, Cyrus and Shabazz, Shesh Bazar, brought all these items and the exiles from Babylon back to Jerusalem. Okay. The list of the next chapter, which is chapter two, the list of exiles who returned. Now, these are people who of the province who came up from the captivity of the exiles, like I just said, from Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, who had taken captive to Babylon. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each of their own town, um, in the company of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, Joshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Mordecai, Bilshan, ben, ben Bana, Rehum, all these names. And then he goes about and then it lists the people, the list of men and the people of Israel. And then all the descendants and all these people who, these are all people who returned, exiles who returned. Okay. Um, so it goes on a bunch of names. I'm not going to um, torture y'all. I'm trying to read all these names. It's a lot. But just know that exiles have been returned. People who were under captivity of um, Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, they've been returned to Jerusalem. Okay. When they arrived at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of the families gave free will offerings toward the rebuilding of God on its site. According to their ability, they gave the treasury for they gave to the treasury for this work um, sixty one derricks, sixty one thousand derricks, um, five thousand minas, um, gold, silver, priestly garments. The priests, the Levites, the musicians, the gatekeepers, the temple servants in their own towns, along with the, some of the people in the Israelites that settled in their towns. So everybody went back to go settle and, um, you know, pay the treasury. Chapter 3 says, we're building the altar. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, the people assembled together as one in Jerusalem. Then Joshua, son of Josedek, and his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shetel, and his associates began to build the altar of God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offering on it in accordance to what was written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Okay. Despite their fear of the peoples around them, they built the altar on its foundation and sacrificed burnt offerings to the Lord, both morning and evening. Then in accordance with what is written, in accordance with what is written, they celebrated the festival of tabernacles, which um, with the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day. After that, they put in the burnt offerings um, and and uh, appointed the, sacri the sacred festivals of the Lord, as well as brought the free will offerings to the Lord. Again, that's free will. On the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, through, though the foundation of the, town, the Lord's temple had not yet been laid. So the foundation had not yet been laid, okay? Then it goes on to a sub, another sub title, Rebuilding the Temple. This is where God, this is what God gave me, um, 420, 426, 421 a.m., I believe, first um, on July 26th, the 22nd, Rebuilding the Temple, when I asked God if he was like still in this. Then they gave money to the masons and the carpenters gave food and drink and olive oil to the people um, so that they would bring cedar logs um, as authorized by Cyrus, King of Persia. In the second month of the second year, after the arrival of the house of God in Israel, um, the priests, the Levites, and all who had returned from captivity to Jerusalem, all who had returned, began the work. They appointed, they appointed Levites, 20 years and older, to supervise the building of the house of the Lord. Okay, um, then it goes on to say, um, 
but again, we're still in chapter three, verse 10. When the work, when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in the vestments with the trumpets and the Levites with the cymbals took their places with, to praise the Lord as prescribed by David the king. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, he is good, his love toward Israel endures forever. All the people gave a great shout, praise to the Lord, because the foundation of the Lord has been laid. Now everybody's praising because the foundation of the Lord has been laid. Watch this. But many of the older priests and the Levites of the family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. No one can distinguish the sounds of the shouts of joy from the sounds of the weeping because the people made such noise and the sound was heard far away. So you got people praising the Lord for this um, foundation being built of the Lord and you got people weeping, mourning the old temple. Okay, people who got a problem. So this is where this next type title comes in called Opposition to the Rebuilding. This is chapter four of Ezra. When the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles were building a temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and to the heads of the families and said, let us help you rebuild. Because like you, we seek our, your God and have been sacrificing to him since the time of um, es Esargadon, king of es Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Joshua and the rest of the heads of the family of Israel answered, you have no part with us in building a temple of our God. We alone will build it for the Lord, the God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, commanded us. The people around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. Because at first they was like, we don't like what they're doing. Let's act like we're going to come try to help. Hey, y'all, what's up? Let's come help you. We're going to help you rebuild. And Joshua was like, that's why you got to use your discernment. Joshua was like, nah, we good. We're building this for our God, for, for the Lord, our God, building the temple for him. We got this. So when they didn't buy into that trick, it says, then the people around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. That's some of us. The enemy is causing us to um, be afraid be anxious that this temple is not going to be be rebuilt that god told us was being rebuilt um so we're like fearing because that was the enemy is trying to do put fear in us okay they bribed officials and other workers to work against them and frustrate the plans during the entire reign of cyrus that's during the entire reign of cyrus and during the king of Persia, Cyrus the king of Persia, and down to the reign of Darius the king of Persia. So from the time of Cyrus's reign down to the um, to the reign of Darius, people were paying officials and people to distract and frustrate the plans of rebuilding this. So you have people that the enemy has sent to tell you something to that he's he's bribed them with whatever promises or just you know. Um, made false idols in, in their heart or whatever to let them, to have them move on his account, to stir up um, nonsense, to cause and wreak havoc and to frustrate the plans of God, to slow down the rebuilding of this temple. You have to watch the people you are around because the enemy can use any and everybody. Okay. Later opposition. So the next subtitle is later opposition under Xerxes and Antarxes. So there's even more opposition. I'm not going to go too much into that. Y'all can read all of this. Um, but I'm going to jump to uh, chapter 4, verse 12. So the people are now mad. So they go, they were like, you know what? We're going to write, we're going to write to the king and let him know what's going on. Because um, they're, they, although they frustrated the plans, people are still building, right? So it says, the, um, the king should know that the people who came up to us from you have gone to Jerusalem and are rebuilding that wicked and rebellious city. They are restoring the walls and repairing the foundations. Furthermore, the king should know that if the city is built and its walls are restored, no more taxes, um, tribute or duty will be paid and eventually the royal revenues will suffer. Now, since we are under obligation to, to the palace and it, it is proper for us to see the king dishonored, we are sending this message to inform the king so that a search may be made in the archives and other your predecessors. In these records, you will find that this city is a rebellious city, troublesome to kings and provinces, and provinces a place with a long history of sed sed sedition. 
that that is why this city was destroyed. We informed the king that this city is that if the city is built and its walls are restored, you will be left with nothing in Trans Euphrates. So they're telling the king, like, listen, you these people are rebuilding. If you don't stop them from rebuilding, the royal palace is gonna suffer, your money's gonna suffer, you're not gonna get nothing because these people are gonna be so into their temple and to their God, they ain't gonna be um helping you, benefiting you, pretty much. So the king replied. And he sent a letter. The letter you sent us has been read and translated in my presence. I have issued an order and a search was made. And it was found that the city has a long history of, of a revolt against kings and has been a place of rebellion and sedition. Jerusalem has had powerful kings ruling over the whole trans-Euphrates and taxes and tribute and duty were, to, were, to, were paid to them. Now, issue an order to, for these men to stop the work so that this city will not be rebuilt until I so order. Be careful not to not to neglect this matter. Why this is threat? Why, why let why let this threat grow to the detriment of the royal interests? Thus, um, as soon as the copy of the letter of King Xerxes was read to them, the secretary and their associates they went immediately to Jerusalem and compelled them to stop. So now they got their letter from the king, and they're like, "Yeah, I gotta stop. We got a letter from the king. He said to stop, right?" So now it, it, the next sub chapter reads: Tetanai's letter to Darius. Now Haggai the prophet, Zechariah um, the prophet, and of of uh, the dis descent of Edo prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of, of God of Israel who was over them. Um, and it says, let me jump to at the to, to verse three, chapter five, verse verse three. At the time, Tetanai, governor of Trans Euphrates, and their associates went to them and asked, "Who authorized you to rebuild this temple and to finish it?" They also asked, what are the names of those who are constructing this building? But the eye of their God was watching over the elders and the Jews, and they were not stopped until a report could go to Darius and it was written to, and has written reply be, um, be received and his written reply be received. So there was a copy of the letter that Tetanai, governor of Trans Euphrates and his associates, the officials, sent to King Darius. The report they sent to him reads as follows. The king should know that we went to the district. So they went to the district to stop the people. The king, the king should know that we went to the district to the temple of the great God. The people are building in large stones and placing timbers in the walls. The work is being carried with diligence and making rapid progress under the under their direction. We questioned the elders and we asked them who authorized you to finish this. We asked them their names so that we could write the names and and, get, and give you the information. This is what they told us. We are the servants of God of heaven and earth we are rebuilding the temple that was built so many years ago and one great king of israel rebuilt and finished built and finished but because our ancestors angered the god of heaven and gave them into the hands of nebuchadnezzar this temple um and de who destroyed he de destroyed this temple and deported the people to babylon however in the first year of cyrus king cyrus issued a decree to rebuild the house of god he even moved the temple from of Babylon, which Nebuchadnezzar um, built, um, and he had taken it from Jerusalem and brought it to the temple, back to the temple. Okay, um, and he told them take these articles and go deposit them in, in the temple in Jerusalem and rebuild the house of God of Insight. So they're the people just reminding them the older issues of that, of, of older decrees about the, how they were informed or instructed to build this um, temple. And they're like, this is what we're going to do. This is the instruction we got from God a long time ago. So we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep building. Okay. Now, if it pleases the king, let us let a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to see if the king Cyrus did in fact. So, okay. So now the people who were the, the, the instigators are like, if it pleases the king, let us go search that royal archives and see if King Cyrus did in fact issue a decree to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. Then the, then let the king send us a decision in this matter. So King issued an order for them to go search and they searched and a scroll was found. A scroll was found in the citadel of the province and it read, let the temple be rebuilt as a place to present sacrifices. Let its foundations be laid. Um, also, uh, what does it say here? Do not interfere with the work of the Lord of God. Um, do not interfere with the work on this temple of God. This is verse seven of chapter six. Let the governor and the Jews and the Jewish elders rebuild this house of God on its site. Moreover, I decree what you are to do for these elders and these Jews in the construction of this house. Their expenses are to be fully paid and the royal treasury, um, from the revenues of Trans Euphrates, so that this will this work will never will not be stopped. So once they found this scroll, 
um, and verify that this decree was written a long time ago, um, they re the King Darius reissued this decree, like reinforced what was already decreed long ago. Okay, so he said um, their expenses are to be fully paid, have, allow them to, to rebuild. You're going to be fully paying them whatever is needed. Um, if that's young bulls, rams, lambs, offerings um, uh, of God of heaven, um, wine, olive oil, must, it must be given to them daily without fail. So now they're making provision for these people who are rebuilding the, the temple for, uh, for the Lord. Furthermore, I decree that if any if anyone defies this edict, a beam is to be pulled from the from their house and they are to be impaled on it. So he is serious about this thing. He's like, if you bother them, I'm gonna take a pole from your house and put it in front of your house and I'm gonna impale you on that pole. Okay. Um basically is how they lynched people back in the day. Okay. So um and for this crime, their house is to be made a pile of rubber, rubble. May God, who has caused his name to dwell there, overthrow any king or prop or people who lifts his hands to change this decree or destroy this temple. I, Darius, have decreed it. Let it be carried out with diligence. Okay, so the next subtitle is Completion and Dedication of the Temple. Then because of the decree, King Darius had sent Tantani, governor of trans Euphrates, and shelf Bazani, and their associates carried it out with diligence. So the elders of the Jews continued to build, prosper, and prosper under the preaching of Haggai. They finished building the temple according to the command of God of Israel. The temple was completed on the third day of the month of Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, um, and, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of this house of God. For the dedication of this house of God, they offered a hundred bulls, two rams, and a bunch of other things, okay? And they installed the priests in their divisions and the Levites um, in their groups for the service of God in Jerusalem, according to what was written in the book of Moses. So, I know that was a lot. But what God gave me is like, there's God is going to give an instruction. God is going to give a word. God is going to give a promise. Okay. Um, he's going to give an instruction according to the promises and plans of your life. Now, opposition is going to come. In fact, it's guaranteed that opposition is going to come. That's why God gives the decree in the first place. Okay. Look at God as being the king decreeing the issues of the land. God gives you this word in the beginning. Knowing that opposition is going to come, not caring that opposition is going to come, and in fact, anticipating op opposition to come. You don't see it. You don't know that. You think once God gives you the word, it's all good. It's going to come to pass. It is, it is what it is. But there, we do have an enemy, okay? And we do have an accuser of the brethren, okay? We do have um, the enemy who seeks to kill and destroy, Okay? Who roams like a roaring lion, seeing who can he can he, who he can devour? Okay, so there will be opposition, but just like they say, you know, weapons will form; they will not prosper. This opposition is not going to opposition is not going to prosper over what God has told you, what God has instructed, what God has promised you. Okay, so there's going to be opposition, but at the end of the day, there is going to be completion. Okay, of this temple, you're going to have people. Opposing the rebuilding of what God told you, the restoration of what God told you, the reconciliation of what God told you. People are going to oppose the enemy, counterfeits, family, friends. Um, people are, are going to even act like come around like they're trying to help you and really don't believe or stand um, in agreement with the temple of God, in, in whatever temple God is ordained in your life to be rebuilt. So you have to use discernment on Who's with you? Who's against you? Who's standing in agreement? It's gonna. It's black and white at the end of the day. Like you're either, and I heard someone say this yesterday. You're either building for the kingdom or you're building for the kingdom of darkness. So the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness. And so, people in your life, things in your life fall in one on one side or the other. There is no gray. There is no area of gray. No shade of gray. Okay. There are going to be people who are going to be against you against the reposition and the, or against the um the rebuilding of of what God has said over your life, the plans God has over your life, and then there's going to be people who are for it, 
who are with you, who are going to help you rebuild, who are going to free will, give you free will offerings, okay, from their hearts. If God changes their hearts, there are going to be people that God is going to, what people we call on, you know, in, during these times, destiny helpers. There are going to be people that God is going to touch their hearts and turn their hearts to even help you, okay? Um, even for example, for my salon, I'm having my opening and God is already sending people to help me with the building of my salon, with the grand opening or the soft opening of my salon, okay? But this is what's going to come to pass is what God has told you. Just because opposition comes don't mean it changes what God has said. This showed you how many times how many times people went and how many how many um ways they went uh, went about of trying to get this temple to be stopped. It was generations. In fact, it was different reign. The reign of um, uh, Darius, the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, the reign of uh, Cyrus. Like during the, the different reigns, there were people trying to oppose this rebuilding, this building and rebuilding of the Lord's temple. But guess what? Out of all of that, all of that duration, all of that time, all of that opposition, it still came to pass. So I'm not sure what I'm going to name this uh, this video. But it's going to be something to the effect of God will issue a the decree. There will come opposition. But what he said is still going to be rebuilt. It's still going to be restored. It's going to still going to be, it's still going to stand. Okay. You don't have to worry about that. God is going to fulfill what he said. He's going to fulfill every promise to you that he said. Everything that he promised you, everything he spoke to you, everything you, you dream of, everything he sends you in a dream, every confirmation, every re revelation he said, it's coming to pass. But you have to you have to be mindful of the opposition that is coming because it is coming. If it has not come already, it's coming. Most of you have already seen it, still dealing with it, facing it. The counterfeits, the 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 people who are just jealous, the people speaking negative over you. Girl, you ain't good enough for that job. Um, why are you going back to school? Going back to school for what? Like, you too old to go to school. Like, you too old to to start a business right now. You're 50 years old. You're trying to start a business. Like, you should have started a business when you were 20. Like. You're gonna have people having comments, um, concerns. They're gonna, but you're also gonna. God is also gonna send people who are destiny helpers to people who are gonna help you, who people who are, are gonna encourage you, people who might even fund your dream. Free will, willingly, okay, willingly, because their hearts have been changed or touched or turned by God Himself, okay. So don't fear the opposition. That rebuilding, that restoring. That building for the for the temple of the Lord in your life, whatever that temple is of the Lord in your life that he told you to build, go ahead and build. Okay? God's going to send the help. But be aware that opposition is going to come. The enemy is going to come and he is crafty and he is sneaky. Okay? He will send people you love. He will send people that love you. People will be used and don't even know they're being used. And then there are people who are not so... Uh, unknowing and are intentionally trying to harm or hurt you or stop your the plans because they don't want to see you succeed for whatever reason okay so this is the word i gotta go i am sure i am certain that i am late um but i had to get this out because i don't want my day to get started um but yeah i will release this and i hope this blessed you i hope this finds you well please read ezra chapter one ver um all the way to chapter six um everything that i read is there i know i was all over the place i know that um the words I was stumbling over, the names as well, tripping me up. But you get the message if you made it this far into the video, okay? Um, there is your, your promise and your temple is on the other side. Have a good day.